Okay, today would be a good day to uh, test the sail because uh, it's a little bit windy. But anyway, here's the um, pretty much the finished uh, sail. It's got reinforcements uh, made of Tyvek that has been uh, spray painted with uh, Krylon uh, paints with plastics. That works very well with Tyvek. I've done kind of similar coloring of Tyvek uh, before for some of the uh, radio control micro lights that I design. Of course, I don't sell the kits with uh, Tyvek wrap. I sell them with rib ripstop nylon uh, materials and mylar and the typical stuff that is used on the real stuff. But for projects such as this one, is a do-it-yourself uh, project, it's not too bad. I punched uh, some holes also for the hooks that are going to tension the sail. I don't have the grommets that size, so I'm going to have to either purchase them or make my own. Uh, I mean, I can do grommets uh, using a 3D printer, fiberglass uh, plate. I mean, there's a number of ways to do uh, grommets here for reinforcing these uh, corners here. But they're, they're reinforced. is double. It's been reinforced on, on both sides. The, um, the mast uh, pocket may need some reinforcements. I got uh, four ply on that. There are the uh, batten pockets. And for the battens, I'm just going to use fiberglass uh, rods, or uh, I have some uh, fiberglass uh, sheets that I can cut some uh, uh, battens from. The top of the sail has also been reinforced. So I'm about to mount this on the fiberglass pole, the pool skimmer pole, once again, until I can get the uh, the pole, uh, the final pole ready. That will work uh, just fine. So I'm going to be doing that next, and I'll come back to this video. Pole or tube that I'm using as a mast. As we can see here, it's a fiberglass. Uh, it's a fiberglass telescopic uh, pole. It extends to 15.5 feet, but of course I'm not using the, the 15.5 uh, feet. I shortened the sail, by the way. I took the uh, angle cut that was on this side with a two-foot uh, additional extension, and I shortened that just to keep it a little bit shorter and more compact. And that should clear nicely the uh, uh, the mast uh, socket on this uh, trike here. So the trike, as it stands right now, it's a uh, I mean, I did this kind of rough. Uh, I mean, it's fairly secure as far as the uh, the T connection is concerned via this uh, uh, half inch uh, plywood with the bolts as you see it here. But this post right here has been untouched. I need to cut this. I have a mark here where I'm going to cut it. So this will be short by uh, this uh, tube is about three, uh, yeah, 36 inches in length. So I'm going to cut about 12 inches, and I'll have a 24 section, 24 inch section here that I can still brace it. I mean, I can use uh, external clamps here even, so I don't have to go through the uh, in, uh, inside of these um, perforations, and that will allow the mass to uh, come down all the way to the bottom if I, if I need to do that. The wheel also is a temporary uh, installation here, and I did this just to bring it closer to my legs as I was test riding this uh, trike, but eventually this is going to be uh, connected at the uh, maybe on the third hole at the very end here. This is part of the telescopic section here. This is smaller than the than the one and a half inch here. Um, this is one and a half inch. This is one and a half inch. The axle uh, support is one and a half inch, and the telescopic section is uh, one and a quarter, I believe. I think there's an eighth of an inch uh, gap on each side. Uh, so I can extend these if I want to even further or inward uh, to to allow for a different uh, distance between the uh, wheels at the back. Um, I need to get some poly cord and uh, I will uh, also get some uh, pulleys uh, that are going to be uh, installed here. The bracing right here is uh, nothing more than, uh, this, is, this is basically um, conduit, um, this is, uh, I believe this is one and a half also inch conduit uh, plates 
these are used for electrical conduit. This is not electrical conduit, by the way. This, these are steel galvanized tubes. The electrical conduit is has a, a, a kind of a golden uh, uh, plating. Not, it's not gold, but it's a gold tone or gold color plating on the uh, on the plates. And this is a little more robust than than this stuff here. I mean, I could have used electrical conduit too here because uh, uh, I do make C C channels, U channels, and and square tubing. But this stuff is a little nicer, um, and uh, and it's galvanized and it's got a nice uh, silver sheen to it. That it kind of matches the rest of the components here. The you know the wheel rims and the brackets. These. Um, uh, Axle bolts actually came from the, the rear wheels. You know, these are wheels without the, the C brackets that I took out. I don't need the C brackets. I mean, I could have used the C brackets here, but I wanted a, a more direct axle through the through the uh, these these tubes, which I think is is the better way to to go. Uh, this one I kept intact with the swivel, and as I was saying in my uh, blog uh, and thread that I got going on this. Um, construction I hope this is able to withstand a little bit of abuse here uh, and if it doesn't well then I can uh, uh, I'll find a way to uh, make my own connection while retaining the same uh, angles here and retaining the same bracket but if that also fails and it's not working uh, correctly then I'll just go to uh, I mean there's a, there's a number of ways to do this uh, even with, with this very same tubing I can manufacture a um, a wheel, uh, um, uh, wheel axle holder, if you will. But I just wanted to cover this up and show a little more detail on, on this particular trike setup here. Uh, also, here's the uh, conduit, this half-inch conduit that's been uh, flattened at the ends very easily on the vise. Drilled a quarter-inch quarter, quarter inch, uh, hole, and I'm using quarter-inch by 20 um, hardware with uh, some nylock nuts of course washers so I'm about to mount that wing on this thing again and uh, see how it behaves the temporary fiberglass uh, pole is my mast I'll come back to this video I guess I'll wait for my daughter to come in and maybe she can videotape while I sit and give it a test drive <laughs> Real quick, uh, yeah, the battens are gonna go in these pockets here. I mean, the pockets are there already. Uh, yeah, I don't know if it, this video can capture the the thread from the uh, sewing. It's, it's moving by itself now. Of course, there's no weight. get it going and uh, a little more refined I think I'm going to paint the tie back just to give it some uh, pizzazz or color it looks kind of cool with these uh, edges here made from the same tie back material and doubled up side to reinforce it so I'll use the same paint give it a nice coat of paint that should uh, give it a little more uh, persona. That wheel, I should move that wheel to the front. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> come back. Come back, come back, come back. Okay, I think 
think I'm gonna sit on that again, maybe. Is that wind enough? I should go get my wind meter. It's moving it again. Of course, there's quite a bit of area here on this sail. And basically, that's all you need you know, to get yourself moving with uh, the natural power of the wind. We should be using that more often, not only in land yachts, but in a lot of things. Power our homes. A lot of stuff you can do with uh, just the natural resources, such as uh, the sun and the wind.